Now, here's another one-minute Bible message from Pastor Steve Wahlberg. Hello, friend. As we look at all the chaos and confusion in the world today, we must never forget that Jesus will soon return. But how will he come? The last book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, in chapter 1, verse 7, tells us this. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. In Matthew 24, verse 30, Jesus himself predicted, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Yes, Jesus is coming with clouds, accompanied by millions of holy angels. So don't fall for any false Christs who may walk around on earth claiming to be Jesus. Let's stick with the Bible so we can be ready for the big day. We hope you enjoyed another one-minute Bible message from Pastor Steve Wahlberg. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, did you remember to uh, get the orange juice? Yes, I brought you some. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Oh, thank you. Oh, I got a fire going. Oh, God, it feels really good in here. Thank oh. you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, it's supposed to snow some more tonight, so how are the roads? You know, not bad. Oh, good. It hasn't started snowing yet. Ah, so, well, good. Hey, I saw your co-worker. Oh, which one? You know, the, the one that his wife was pregnant? Uh, Doug. Doug. And yeah. they had their baby. Oh, I'm going to have to give him a call. He's so cute. He showed me pictures. Ah. Um, okay, so I'm not done. I have another surprise for you for your birthday. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, more? Oh, well, let me help you with that. Happy birthday. 
Oh wow. Thank you. Oh, this looks fantastic. Wow. So the easel that's in the living room is for that. Oh, okay. Let me go put it on there. Hey, this looks great on the easel over here. Good. I'm glad you like it. Well, I've been working on the puzzle. What? Without me? Yeah, well, it's going to keep us busy for some time. I've only got the edges done. Okay, good, because I want I want us to do it together. Hi. Hmm. Hey. There you Thank go. You. I really want to talk to you about something. Okay, but can it wait till after the news? Okay, don't let me forget. It looks as though Washington is coming to some kind of agreement. Standing by at the Capitol is Andy Vasquez with a report. Andy? And that's exactly how it looks here, Bill. The White House has given conditions under which the President will sign the bill. These provisions are, as POTUS said, set in stone. It seems as though the entire House of Representatives think it's a good idea. It is almost positive that the White House will sign this bill into law. Thank you, Andy Vasquez. Today's aftermath of a massive tidal wave that hit Southeast India indicate more than 200,000 people have died as a result of drowning. Brianna Teller is on the ground and has this report. That's right, Bill. The Earth Health Organization has said that they do have people on the ground and they are taking samples of the soil and the water to determine what the risks actually are for an outbreak of cholera. As you know, they have studied the eco-effects of the tidal wave and have determined that there may be some outbreaks of the disease because of the devastation of the medical infrastructure. Also, the Pope said again he wishes the world would adopt his Sunday World Day of Rest. He said, Sunday is the day to make peace with life. Breaking news. This morning in Israel, thousands of locals flooded the streets despite government lockdown orders. Locals say there were strange lights that started at dawn in the streets of the city. We have Father Carl Heinz Mueller in Israel. Father Mueller is a local priest in a small vicinity not far from the center of Bethlehem. Good morning, Father and thank you for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. What exactly did you see this morning? Well, I was in my house and I, I, I saw a bright light, a, a dazzling light coming down the street from my house. And as soon as I exited the building, I noticed my entire neighborhood was headed out to see this light. And they were all screaming very loudly. Christus is coming, Christus is coming. Christ has come, Christ is coming. And so I went out too, to, to the light and I noticed this beautiful light, uh, dazzling light. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Uh, the light was different. It seemed to come from within Christ as well as from around him. And the light uh, shone dazzling in beauty. I was drawn to it. And and then he said something very important. Now, now, this is important. He said, all the world troubles will go away if we just do one thing. He said, if we just obey the Sunday and keep the Sunday holy, then all the troubles, you know, the, the, the environmental troubles, the political unrest, they will all go away. If we just Father, do this. excuse me, just a minute. We have a clip just in. <laughs> Let's just take a look. Father Mueller, is this what you saw? Yes, this is exactly what I saw. It was exactly like that. He, then he, he said to us, blessed are they that mourn 
for they shall be comforted. It was beautiful. The light around him and the comforting words, it brought much peace to my soul. And then, then he did something. What did he do? Well, it, it, it is hard to describe, but I believe he began to heal the people of their diseases, one by one, whatever it was. Whatever their ailments was, he healed them. And then he began saying the blessings in the Bible that we have heard and, and studied for so long. It was beautiful. My heart was touched. It was wonderful. I will never forget it. Christ has come. He's come to the earth. And Christus is Gekumen. Christus is Gekumen. Now, as a news anchor, I've spent my entire life fighting the idea of any existence of any God of any kind. This story today has made me rethink my previous doubts. I have now a complete change of mind. It looks like Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Catholic, and many other Christian leaders are hailing this as the beginning of the thousand years of... Hey, I was watching that. Dan, I don't think that's Jesus. What do you mean? It was Jesus. I saw him with my own eyes. This is the news, not some science fiction program. Dan, I've been studying the Bible. I've been studying the Jesus' second coming. And either we believe the Bible or we don't. The Bible holds the answers for last day events. Do you realize that people gave their life for us to have that book? That should tell you how important it is. Are you becoming some type of reformer? The Protestant Reformation is over. We learned about that at church. Well, well, if people are trying to change the Bible teachings, then yes. And you know their motto, the reformers' motto was the Bible and the Bible alone. Sola Scriptura. Maybe that should be our motto. I'll tell you what. What? Let me show you what I've learned. What? About the rapture? I know all about that stuff. No. We have not been learning this stuff at church. You know that we usually go to church and listen to everything the pastor says, and we never study it for ourselves. Well, I've been studying it for myself. And when Jesus comes, the entire world will see him. Come on. It was Jesus. I saw him. Dan, not like that. Everyone will see him in the sky. Now, I don't need my Bible. We learned about all of this stuff at church. You'll see. Dan, I want to show you what I found. And I'm going to start in the book of Acts in chapter 1. Wait, let's pray first. Dear Jesus, please show us your truth and help us not be deceived. In Jesus' name, amen. Dan, in chapter 1, verse 9, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is Jesus talking to the disciples, and then he goes up into the sky. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up, shall so come in like manner, as you have seen him go into heaven. Hmm. Okay, so... What's your point? Dan, this is telling you that Jesus is coming back the same way he went up. Uh, I don't, I still don't get it. What's your point? Dan, Jesus is there with the disciples. They see him going up into the clouds, into the sky. And the angels say he's coming back the same way. Yeah, okay. I'm just not understanding, I'm just not getting it. Okay, so Dan, 
this is saying that when Jesus comes back, he's coming in the clouds. He's not going to be walking around the earth. But, but this man, and I saw he was doing miracles, real miracles. He was healing people. The, the, that's what the priest said, and, and I saw it with my own eyes. It has to be Jesus. I'm not done showing you what I found. Oh, you can go ahead, but I'm just as smart as you are. I'm not convinced yet. Dan, of course you're just as smart as me, and this has nothing to do with intellect. This has to do with truth and not being deceived. Matthew 24, 23 says, Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Dan, that includes reporters. So, are you saying that WHN is fake news? Dan, since when do you believe everything you watch on the news? I don't. But, Andre, I saw him with my own eyes. It has to be Jesus. Dan, maybe this time you cannot rely on your eyes. And we need to rely on God's word so that we will not be deceived. All right, well, keep going. Okay, so in verse 24 it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Huh. Huh. Could, could you read that verse again? Sure. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Does it really say that? Let me see your Bible here. Let me read it for myself. Let me see here. Verse, you said 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Wow. They don't teach that in church. I've never seen this before. I know, exactly. And that's why we need to study it for ourselves. Look at what verse 25 says. It says, Behold, I have told you before. Dan, those are Jesus' words. He told us this long ago, warning us of what will happen now. Don't you think that that's what we're seeing right now? Right before our own eyes? Wow. So, what else does Jesus say? So, it says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Dan, when Jesus comes, we will see him in the sky like the lightning. And we shouldn't believe other people saying, go see him here or go see him there. Because Dan, when the real Jesus comes, we won't need news reporters giving us a story. Uh, so, so who, so that, I saw that glowing being walking around on TV. So who was that? What was that? That's a really good question. You know, I just thought of a verse that I found in 2 Thessalonians 2. Oh yeah, here starting in verse 9, it says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
So you think that I was, what I was watching, it was, it was Satan? Well, Dan, that's what this seems to say, that Satan with all lying power and signs and lying wonders is going to deceive the people. But if we rely on his word, we will not be deceived. You know, Dan, I have been so blessed. I've been reading this book called The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan. And this book has, was written a long time ago, but it points you to the Bible and the Bible verses. And this is where I've been learning about the second coming. And Dan, the things that it talked about have happened. And even now with what we're reading and what, you, what I heard you were listening to, Listen to what I read the other day, here in page 624. Listen to this. As the crowning act of the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look at the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation. Wow, that, that's exactly what I was seeing on TV. And it says, the glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have beheld. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air Christ has come, Christ has come. And the people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth. And here further down it says, this is the strong, almost overmastering delusion. Huh, Whew. huh, it's unbelievable. Hey, it's starting to make sense. That, that puzzle that I've been working on, that it, it shows this very, this very stuff we're talking about. Let me, let me take a look at that. I wonder how many other people this is deceived. I wonder if there's any other stations out there talking about God's word and the Bible truth. Comes in from the right. The first step was a bit this pandemic. Have you heard the news, friends? Someone who claims to be Jesus is walking around in Bethlehem. His face is glowing. He's quoting the Bible. He's healing the sick. And even telling everyone to follow the Pope, who says that if we all keep Sunday as a universal day of rest, all the world's problems will go away. It's time for me to talk to you, friends, straight about what the Bible really says. In Matthew 24, verse 27, in Acts 1, verse 9 to 11, in Revelation 1, verse 7, and countless other Bible verses we can read that the real Jesus will return in the clouds. He won't be walking around on earth. So who is this bright, shiny being that's walking around in Israel? Listen carefully, friends. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, the Bible says, And no marvel, for Satan himself will transform into an angel of light. Yes, Satan can transform himself to look like someone else, even Jesus. So don't be fooled. The Bible is very clear that the real Jesus will soon appear above our heads in the sky and every eye will see him. So don't fall for Satan and his lies. I urge you to believe in the real Jesus 
and in the truth of God's Word. Believe it or not, deception first began up in heaven. A mighty noble angel named Lucifer decided he no longer wanted to worship his maker, but rather himself. Somehow he convinced one third of God's holy angels to join his rebellious cause. In Revelation chapter 12, verses seven to nine, the Bible says that there was war in heaven and that Satan and his angels were cast out to this earth. From the days of Adam and Eve all the way down to today, the devil has continued his work of delusion. Revelation chapter 12, verse nine also adds that Satan deceives the whole world. That's his ultimate agenda, his end game. And right before Jesus Christ returns to this earth in the clouds with billions of his loyal angels, the crowning act of his satanic trickery will occur when the devil himself personates Jesus Christ himself. Jesus warned us about this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 23, when he said, then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Tragically, the world's masses will believe it, and they will worship this imposter because they haven't looked closely enough at what the Holy Bible really says about the real Jesus and about his second coming. So when Satan shows up looking like Jesus, and especially when he performs great signs, wonders, and miracles, millions will say, it's him, it's Jesus. He has come to earth to help us solve all of our problems. This is your warning in advance. As fallen human history rapidly nears its apocalyptic climax, I appeal to you from my heart to your heart to study the Holy Bible for yourself, to believe in the real Jesus who came down from heaven 2,000 years ago to reveal God's intense love for us and to pay the ultimate price of dying for our sins upon a cruel cross. Then he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and soon he will come back in blazing glory and we won't need a TV set to watch it. No one will miss it. He's coming to crush the deceiver and to rescue all who truly believe in him. Thank you for watching The Crowning Act. Let's be ready for the big day. Hey, we're down to the last part of this puzzle. Well, when you've got all the pieces, the picture makes a lot more sense. You know, that's true in a lot of ways.